I didn't want to make this video, but I'm here to tell you this. The other day, something happened to Noodle, one of our first guinea pig, and the one who is the face of this channel. Hello, my name is Daniel, the editor of this channel, and I will share her story to tell you how fragile these little guinea pigs can be. What happened to Noodle, you may ask? This is something that started really slowly. It wasn't obvious in the first few days. Then, all of a sudden, everything happened so quickly and we almost lost her. If you have watched our latest video on how to detect if a guinea pig is sick, you will recognize some of the symptoms. Stay until the end and try to see if you can spot the three most important signs that Noodle gave us. Now let's go back one week before the event to see what happened. Before the event, Noodle slowly started to act strangely. Sometimes we had the impression that she was under the weather. When it was dinner time, she would pick up the big piece of lettuce and hide herself in a corner to eat it. At first, I thought that she didn't want to be bothered by the others who kept stealing her food. I didn't get too worried because she was still drinking, eating pellets, and enjoying the evening wheat grass like the others. Three days before the event, like every Sunday, we did the big cage cleanup. We took her out with the rest of the herd into a temporary cage in the living room. As usual, I was filming them enjoying the clean cage with a big plate of food. When I looked back at the videos, I could see that something was odd with Mudo. She was eating her veggies a bit slower than usual, but it was barely noticeable. The following day, the poopsies started to hit the fan. When I went to fill up the water bottle, I noticed that Squash was not looking well. She didn't even try to run away when I came to pick her up. I immediately brought her with us in the living room to see what's wrong. We tried to give her some wheat grass and other treats, and she didn't even try to open her mouth. And we became really worried. We managed to secure an appointment with the vet for a checkup the following day. To avoid any conflict in the cage and to give her a chance to eat, we've placed her in a separate cage for the night. We thought it would be a good idea to put Noodle with her to keep her company. The next day, when Squash came back from the vet, we kept her with Noodle in the separate cage while waiting for the result of the test, as recommended by the vet, just in case that Squash had an infection. Noodle was active and happy to support Squash. The next day, Squash was not looking so well even with her antibiotics and the pain meds. She was not in a good mood to eat a lot. Later that night, we gave her some fresh cut grass. After a moment, we observed that even Noodle had difficulty eating. The worst part for Noodle is that she was trying really hard, but it was making an horrible grinding sound. We called the vet again. Unfortunately, they didn't have any opening and we had to wait an extra day for a visit. Noodle felt really light and after putting her on the scale, I realized that she had lost weight drastically. She used to weigh around 1100 grams, but now she was only at 900 grams. When we were finally able to visit the vet, we were relieved with the result. It was not a blockage nor a broken jaw. The vet told us that it was only overgrown teeth. They were able to grind them to help her. In the meantime, she would need to receive some critical care and her meds to gain weight. After two days of giving critical care and medication to Noodle, she was still unable to eat by herself at all. What's worse is that she was continuously grinding her teeth, making horrible noise. We called back the clinic immediately and they were able to take her in as an emergency if we arrive in the next 60 minutes. At the vet, they were able to see that the back molars were not in good condition. They also noticed some abscess, causing pain and limiting her ability to swallow food. The vet was able to work a bit on the back teeth, 
they told us that we have to come back in two days for some x-rays and in the meantime we had to try our best to feed her by hand. After bringing Noodle back home, we noticed that all the other piggies seemed sad and somewhat worried about Noodle. For Squash, she was doing much better and she was able to eat by herself again. Also, the lab result came negative. We then put her back with the other piggies. Despite her pain, she was stimulated by Sarah. She even made some effort to nibble on some corn and eat some mini tomatoes. I think this is because it was the only food that Sarah didn't want to eat. Back to the vet for a third time. After a visual evaluation, it was not required to do any x-ray. Noodle had her back to the ground one more time and they told us that her mouth was starting to heal. They gave us an additional medication to stimulate her appetite. We were relieved and hopeful that she would recover quickly. Have you been able to recognize the different symptoms that allowed us to realize that something was wrong with Noodle? Let me know in the comments if you have found them. Here is the three symptoms that save Noodle. Change of behavior, loss of appetite, or in her case, difficulty to eat. Weight loss. As mentioned in my video about the sign of illness, it's important to watch for anything unusual with them. Because they are small and fragile, it is important to look at them every day to detect anything unusual. It's been two weeks now. Noodle is gradually improving, but it's very slow. She don't enjoy taking the medicine, and feeding her with critical care is really challenging. However, she manages it. She's been eating more and more by herself. She enjoys some soft vegetables, such as watermelon and cucumber. She gradually began eating spinach and baby lettuce. Just like her favorite YouTuber, she never backed down, she never gave up. Therefore, we don't give up neither. Even if it means that we have to prepare a plate of food just for her, and that we have to hand feed her for over an hour, plus the critical care and the medication. With our busy life, we sometimes struggle to keep track of all the tasks we need to do for them. This is why I've created a care guide that you can download for free. This will allow you to keep track of your guinea pigs and provide them with good care. The link is in the description below. As a good guinea pig owner, you need to know how to recognize when your guinea pig is sick or not feeling well. Check out this video to discover different signs of illness. As usual, because you stay till the end, you're an awesome guinea pig owner. Thank you for watching.